New Year's resolutions. Happy New Year! Welcome to Society of Nova Spiritus. New to Novus? Society of Nova Spiritus was founded by the late Sylvia Brown. Novus is Sylvia's monument to God, a forum to express the joy and love that is God, with no fear, no guilt, no sin, no hell, and no Satan. Through Novus, Sylvia gives the world a means to understand God, life, and the reason for being. You can read more details on our website at novus.org. Uh, I trust this is working properly because everything seems to be saying I'm going forward here. So, um, welcome. I'm the host, Reverend Tom Bigley. You can learn more about me by watching previous videos from probably like two years ago. Um, and you can listen to the New Spirit Radio podcast. Uh, that's on YouTube and Facebook. It's live. Of course, I'll tell some more information here during announcements. But you'll learn more about who I am. Uh, let's see, a quick outline. Uh, I encourage you to, you know, if you want, stop at this moment and grab your communion edibles and the colored candle. So, yes, we're doing a special service. Um, we'll talk about, let's see, oh, and light a candle if it's appropriate. So sit back, relax, visualize that we're all gathered in a small auditorium and enjoy the special Sunday service. This is the winter solstice ceremony. Uh, prayers uh, are in the description, so you're, you know, if you want to read along with those, print them out or something and read them along, or just listen along as I say the the, the prayers for this ceremony. Uh, our speakers are Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown. We have a classic uh, that's, uh, you know, works for this time of year. Um, so, quick agenda: what how the steps of the ceremony are. Uh, we'll I'll light the candle. We have an opening prayer. I introduce the speakers, and then we listen to the, the speakers. I'll talk about the winter solstice explanation. Uh, then we have a middle prayer, a communion prayer. Then we can participate, share together in communion. Uh, I'll do a meditation that's related to the winter solstice. Uh, we'll, I'll talk about collections and announcements, uh, petitions and testimonials. Then we'll have a moment of silence. Um, I'll read uh, the benediction that you're all welcome to uh, participate in. And then uh, we have a closing prayer, and I conclude with extinguishing of the candle. So let's see. Oh, first things first here. Lighting of the candle. Oop, hello. It would be cute if I can... Now, this might be kind of loud, so I'm sorry about that, but these are fresh candles. I have been burning them out for other purposes here. So we got a nice candle for, it's going to stay lit, I hope so, for the ceremony. So I want to welcome all of you to the Society of Nova Spiritus. Good morning. Uh, now's a good time to silence your cell phones, uh, or if you have a landline, you can always pull the cord on it uh, carefully. Uh, what we're encouraging is, you know, this is a time for you. You've made an appointment for yourself uh, and, you know, to not be distracted. Uh, this is for you, you time. If you're in a group, wonderful. Uh, you know, we do encourage people uh, to uh, um, have a friendship greeting. So if you're inviting a, a special person with you, you know, stop and say, hi, how are you? Glad you made it and uh, that we're here together. So we want to uh, I want to welcome, you know, we come together to pay homage to Mother and Father God as we support one another in our search for truth. Today, as I was saying, is the winter sol solstice service. Uh, and at this time, uh, you know, we're not going to do, we normally, when we do in person, uh, we would collect petitions ahead of time. But we're, since we're um, in remote at this time, uh, uh, we do collect petitions, but then we would normally collect them during the communion service for these special services. Uh, so, however, you know, if you've got a special petition, uh, you're welcome to either leave it in the comments, you're welcome to go to the website and put it in the uh, uh, prayer chain, uh, because we're, you know, God knows your, your energies there. We're putting, asking, you know, we're going to participate together here later and ask for energy to go out for all the petitions. 
uh, uh, that, that people uh, are, have put out. And of course, these petitions are private between you and God. Uh, you know, when we do have in-person um, ceremonies, yes, we do submit our paper petitions. Uh, just as, you know, last month we had Mother Asna's uh, feast day. Uh, that's a special time of year for submitting petitions. Uh, of course, you know, in in in-person services, no one ever reads the paper petitions that you submit. Uh, and typically, those petitions are taken after service and are either burned or shredded, of course, you know, according to um, what's appropriate for the, for the location. And this is symbolic of giving your request to the power of the universe to get that energy out there. It's, a, you know, symbolic of, of releasing that energy. You can do it for yourself. Uh, you know, if wherever you are at listening to this, um, you know, create your own ceremony that is, uh, that is special to you about giving that energy out, getting that energy and the request out to the universe. And of course, um, ashes or the shreds are then placed in, in a garden. Now I like to um, start the service. Our candle's still lit here, so that's a good thing. Um, like to, we're doing seem to be doing good electronically wise here. Um, so I want to start with the opening prayer. So you're welcome to read along or listen along as I read the opening prayer for uh, the service. Dear Mother Asna. Bless this winter solstice. Bless this time of quiet as well as introspection. Bless us with your colors of your nature that, you're, that you guard, that you guard. Bless this earth and those of us who still struggle here. Please surround us with your grace. This, dearest mother, we ask in your holy name. We also call on the name of Jesus, our Christ consciousness, and our Father, who is with us, and the divine light of the Holy Spirit. The colors we ask for, our auras to emanate are, green for healing, purple for sanctity, gold for higher consciousness, blue for tranquility, white for protection. We want all these colors to surround us, but we ask and receive a special color today that dominates our auras to manifest our needs throughout the year. Bless us, Mother. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. So now I'd like to introduce our speakers. Uh, so now listen as Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown provide us with spiritual knowledge and their unique no-nonsense humor. I gotta find the buttons here, so... Give me a moment. The speakers today are Larry Beck and our beloved Sylvia Brown. Thank you, Gene and Wanda, of course, for your lovely song. Uh, today, of course, is our first uh, day of the new year. And uh, a heartfelt thanks to all of you and a heartfelt welcome to all of you who are new today. Today, I wanted to chat slightly about a history lesson, so to speak. The Gnostics have been around for a long time. In fact, we date ourselves to about 72, 10-ish years in, in our own recorded history. But we have been called at times heretical. We have been called at times intellectual snobs. We have been called at times many other things, which I can't go into here. However, what we are are seekers of truth. Bottom line, we seek, we knock, and we find, as indeed did our Lord Jesus Christ. But what I'd like to chat with you briefly is about the origins, the Genesis, if you will, because I believe the Gnostic version of Genesis is enormously amusing. Now let me give you a reminder, if you have read your Old Testament the Genesis story goes something like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh. Then, what happened? God created Adam. Adam needed a helpmate. And drawn from the rib of Adam, God created woman, Eve. 
Interesting to note, in the Hebrew, Eve means life. So there's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Then the mean old snake, the serpent, or dragon, if you will, comes along, tempts Eve to eat of the forbidden tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which, of course, she does. Also pulls Adam in on this, and together they defy God, who had forbade them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And for this heinous act, God condemned them to be cast out of paradise into the land of Canaan, earth. And to, among other things, because Eve was such a culprit, to have her pain in childbirth multiplied a hundredfold, and for the serpent to crawl on his belly for all eternity, and for Adam to wander around struggling to live This is from an all-loving God? I don't think so. So that's roughly the story. Because (laughs) Adam and Eve had defied God's order. Now we can read that, and there's a lot of amusing anecdotal things in Genesis. For instance, my favorite is God's wandering around saying, Where are you, Adam? (laughs) Where are you, Eve? I just find that to be totally stupid. If God doesn't know, who does, okay? (laughs) Think, seek, ask, always think. Now, along comes one of the pivotal times in uh, early church history. Now, when I say church, I do mean the established Catholic, because that's what we base our timing on. There was a great heresy by a gentleman named Arianus. And the heresy was that God was separately distinct from Jesus and that Jesus was one of God's sons, as were all of we. Sounds Gnostic? It was. But, of course, at the Council of Nicaea in 325, they obliterated the Arian heresy And Constantine at the time, emperor of all the known world, decreed by vote that God and Jesus were identical in the same substantial flesh. So God and Jesus became one based on a vote of various religious people. So today I think we should vote me to be God and Jesus (laughs) and Larry. What do you think? No hands going up. You are smarter than I thought. <clears throat> now let's move into the Gnostic Genesis. And why do I say Gnostic? Because it came from the uh, texts found at the Nag Hammadi site. I recommend highly to all of you, get what's called The Other Bible. And it's a good collection of the Nag Hammadi stuff, plus some pseudepigraphia from ancient Hebrew writings, the lost books of the Bible that were delineated in some other council, ecumenical council. 343 thing. Yep. Anyway, these have some hilarious things in them. And let me tell you again briefly, because this is the new year, and Genesis is the new thing, about the Gnostic version of Genesis. Everything is turned upside down. In the Gnostic version, the female principal named Sophia created unbidden by her consort, the male entity, the male god, created life. Now, in Sophia, the name means wisdom. Wisdom gave birth to life. How does one acquire wisdom? We know. You acquire it by experience, by movement, by living on this planet, by breathing, by understanding what it truly means to be good or bad. Only by direct experience can you know what it truly means to be a good person. And to know that, you have to know what it means to not be a good person. So wisdom gave birth to life. There's the singular uh, correct analogy from the Old Testament. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the same as plucking life. Eating of it is the same, eating that apple is the same as living on this planet so you can know good versus evil. 
But the Gnostic version gets a little bit funnier at this point. They say the God wandering around the garden asking, where art thou, Adam and Eve, is the false God. And they say Adam and Eve are pieces of the divine light entrapped in human flesh. And ignorance is their domain because they have not known good versus evil. So here they have a spark of the original real God, not the fake God wandering around Eden asking, where are you? But the true divine spark is in Adam and Eve. The serpent comes along and says, you need to know good from evil. You need to perfect, as it were. That serpent is equated in the Gnostic version as Christ. The liberator from the ignorance of not knowing. And indeed, I should be a little more ecumenical. It could have been Buddha. It could have been Muhammad. It could have been whomever. Choose your Messiah. But that Messiah is embodied in the Genesis as saying, you need to know. You must know. And to live life, you have to be thrown out of Eden into the world. But not because you sinned, quite the opposite. Because your ignorance has to be corrected. So the Gnostic version is seeking knowledge is by living life. And that the Savior, if you wish Christ, is the one who told you pluck that apple and eat and drink deeply of it. Live and walk among the flesh. That's what we do. So the Gnostics said wisdom, the feminine thing, the feminine side, wisdom, gave the impetus to live the life. So that's what we have with the Gnostic Genesis. It's a fun book to read, very recommended. And then in closing, I would like to mention, also in the other Bible is a wondrous text called Thunder Perfect Mind. Why is it called that? Haven't a clue. Good book, though. But taken from Thunder Perfect Mind is this description of Asna. They don't use Asna, they say Sophia. What's in a name? Now this is the divine feminine principle describing herself. For I am the first and the last. I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. I am the barren one, and many are her sons. I am the silence that is incomprehensible. I am the utterance of my name. Call on Asna, for she is the utterance of her name. And would you please join with me in welcoming the Sylvia part of the perfect mind. (laughs) well that was very good Larry very lofty very intelligent and that's what we mean by the the Gnostic and the more you study the more you go through and study different religions the more you will come upon this faith. You can't help it. Because ignorance has kept most of us from it. Not only does it become an infused knowledge as you begin to arrive at a spiritual level, but it becomes logical. It becomes a reality. I wanted to talk to you today about those lousy New Year's resolutions. Every year I hear people say, I've made the New Year's resolutions. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many times I've made resolutions only to what? Break them. And this sets you up for what? Failure. Now, what I do recommend is that we have some very, very spiritual resolutions. Seems that those are easier for us 
and sometimes harder, but sometimes easier than the flesh ones, aren't they? Because after all, we reside here. It's very much like we can go over to somebody else's house and clean their kitchen, but we don't, we don't want to clean ours. <laughs> so what I would recommend, and you know, in our religious belief, we just recommend. I'm a little bit harsher than Larry is at times. I, you know, I say that these things should be done, but not mandatory because of sin. See, that was always how religions caught us, was make resolutions, do not sin. And we had lots of sins, didn't we? And it seems like they were making up new ones all the time. But you must realize, and I've told, but some of you new ones don't realize, is that I do come from a Jewish, Catholic, Episcopalian background. So I'm somewhat of a, like I say, a walking religion all by myself religious. And in all of those, trust me when I tell you, there are wonderful grains of truth. But the resolution is for us, let's say, to read more, to study and find what has been around longer than what we call the, what we, the known Christian world. Because we are Gnostic Christians. But we believe to the letter of the law in what Christ taught because Christ was a Gnostic. Also, let's make the resolution to be righteous. You know, it's a strange word. People say, how do I be righteous? By not being complacent. There's too much complacency. People say, oh, just let it be. That's a wrongdoing, but I'll just turn the other way. Because it's too difficult to get in the middle of something. No, 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 no. That's a wrong. And that's not a wrong that God says is a wrong. It's a wrong against yourself. See, when we talk ever about sin or missing the mark, it's missing yourself. And if you have right actions, and in, if you're righteous, you see what's wrong with this country now? What's wrong with this state, this city, this government, whatever? It's complacency. To be righteous, to stand for what you believe. To be, listen to me very carefully when I say this, opinionated. Now, the word opinionated, here we go with the etymology of the word, and I know you know that I was a school teacher and I was an English school teacher. But I want you to look up the word opinionated. It means to have your own specific opinion. doesn't mean that you're going to infringe that on anybody else, but for God's sake, have your own opinion that you stand for. It has nothing to do with bigotry. We're going to talk about that in a minute in prejudice. That's a whole other ball of wax. But to have an opinion on something. Don't you hate people that waffle? You say, what's your opinion on anything? Oh, I don't know. It could be this. It could be that. Make a decision spiritually of where you want to be. And why I say spiritually? Because if you make a decision spiritually where you want to be, I trust me when I tell you this from the bottom of my soul. Everything else falls into place. But you waffle on your belief system. You waffle on where you're going, where you've been. Spiritually, everything else does not fall into place. Sure, life hits you, but you become like the clown doll that springs back up. You see these people that fall and they don't get up? They have no spiritual basis. I had a minister, beautiful minister come up to me this morning and said to me, if it hadn't been for this religious belief, Sylvia, I don't think I could have made it through some hard. And I hear that in my reading room. We hear it in our study groups across the country. It's because we know that this is all a transient place. But let's stand up and be counted with our opinion. And more than opinion, fact. Now, let's make a resolution not to be bigoted. Bigotry is an ugly thing because it's a sister of ignorance, isn't it? And so is prejudice. And I don't mean this namby-pamby stuff about not prejudging. Are we not going to judge the act that was done on polyclass? You bet we are. But we can't judge that man's soul, can we? It's tough. Because if it was my kid, I'd want, I'm telling you, and I, don't, I think this every mother and father in this room could stand with me and say, I'd want him dead and tortured. 
But we, I mean, that's a normal human thing, isn't it? But we can't judge what, ultimately, what Polly Class came to do. And we can't judge how he played a part in that. Who's to say in the long, because I really had a problem, I have a problem with any child getting hurt. I have a problem with everybody getting hurt, but especially a child. Francine said to me, my spirit guide, she was, because it became so large and so big, she took this option to come down and make this so that the Poly Class Foundation would make the world finally turn and say, no more of this. No more of this. And that's, when we get to it, that's what the Jews had going. No more of this, the Holocaust. People say, what was that about? How horrible Hitler was. You've got to realize God didn't just say, okay, all you people in this room down there and gassed. No, people raised their hand and said, I will do it to make the world change. I will be this, I will be that. You mean to tell me sitting there, you don't think that you haven't changed your world? Yes, you have. I don't care how narrow, how small, how large. You, because you came into this world, you changed a piece of it. And that's like Larry said, that's why. I find it amazing, just to give you a little bit of historical knowledge, that the snake was so bad, and that yet we read in Solomon and David that in front of their temples were huge snakes. If the, if the snake was so bad, why does Solomon and David have big brown, big brown serpents at the guardian of the gate to their churches, their temples? Because a snake was what? Always through ancient times. I don't like snakes. But it was a symbol of... Fertility and rebirth and shedding the skin and giving life. Now, we could go really goofy with this and say it is a reincarnation symbol also, which I believe. Let this next year, sure, maybe we won't eat so much or we won't do all those other things or we won't pick our toenails or whatever we do. <laughs> this is so stupid. Because the vehicle, yes, is important to take care of, and I think it's very important that we have to keep the vehicle healthy. Because we reside in it. Who wants to run around with a car with dents in it? We don't. We like to drive a nice car. But it's so important in who inhabits the car. And so if we say, I'm, not go I'm going to get away from ignorance, I'm going to read more, I'm going to search out and find, because I guarantee you, not by any reading list, but you start reading from the very beginning of church histories, whether it's like Larry said, whether it's Catholicism or early Christianity, and you start delving back into the Cathars, you start del delving back into the Essenes, I guarantee you, you will come upon this. You will become, like Christ, a believer in Gnosticism of which he was. A seeker of truth. And he said, as Larry said, Seek and ye shall find, and knock and it shall be opened unto you. We never hear any of the dogma that Christ put out. Like we heard last week, there were only two commandments. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. That was what he said. We've got all this stuff going on. And we've got to quit with this racial stuff. We have got to stop with the creed business. I've said so many times, not that we don't think that we're right. Of course we know we're right by logic and research. But by God, if somebody's going to be a good Methodist, Presbyterian, then be the best you can. So be convicted in what you are. Be convicted in who you are. That's what's resolved. And have your opinion. People say, oh, I don't want to tell people I'm Gnostic because, you know, it sounds like a psychic church and all that. See, what you don't understand is if you go farther, and most of you do, if you become spiritual, you can't help but be psychic. There's no way around it. 
It's one and the same. But why church wanted to separate it? Because if you have free thinkers, what do you have? You have knowledge. And then you could have chaos. And then you don't hold your members together. And then you don't get lots of money. Because if you get scared, then you come. And that's not the reason why we come. Like I told you last week, we come because there's a very reality there. And even Christ said it. Buddha said it. Mohammedan said it. Coming together, that's why people go to Mecca. Because in a group, there is an energy force field and a grace that descends. That's the only reason we meet once a week. Because in meeting, the grace comes. It's a gathering of power of one united mind. And it gets you through that six, seven days. That's the reason. Because the universe then looks and says, look, they're making an active effort. You see, this isn't, we're not learning just for ourselves. We're learning for everybody on the other side that watches us. Isn't that an amazing thing? And through our, not only do they come down and learn, but through our suffering and trial, they eat popcorn and watch us. <laughs> I have visions of that. Oh, look at what they're doing. Oh, my. Look at that one now. Mm. Come here, Henriette, and watch her. Oh. Did you ever see anything like that? No, I didn't. <laughs> but we are learning for everyone. We're learning for the God. And Larry made a very good truth, and it is a truth, that we are the spark of the divine that is learning for the knowledge of God. See, doesn't God have all that knowledge? Experience and knowledge. God has the knowledge. We are the experiencing part of that knowledge. And that's why it's so important to live right action. I feel so bad. I feel so bad when I hear people say, I don't know what's beyond this. I felt so bad when I heard Billy Graham say to the, uh, because I think Billy Graham is a wonderful man. I think he is a, a jewel. And he said to this interviewer, I think I told you some weeks ago, and it's haunted me. He said, what do you want to have happen to you, Billy, when you die? He said, I want Christ to come to me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. And you know what he said? But I don't think he will. Didn't it make your heart hurt? Of course he will. I want to say, yes, he will. Why have we put Christ so far away from us that we can't walk in his, with his hand in ours and our hand in his? Why have we put him? He wanted to be our friend. He wanted to walk with me, with me, with you. It's sort of like that poem with the footsteps. Why weren't you there? Because I carried you. That's why there's only one set, said Christ. So we are here to bring the truth back. Small that we may be, mighty will we become. For the new year, my hope is that will come to fruition, is that we're going to have a group for the elderly, of which most of the ministers and myself will join. <laughs> I said, forget the video, get the old people's home ready. We're getting there. <laughs> First, we thought about starting a children's home, but as we looked around at each other, we said, mm mm, wrong choice. Um, I want to start a singles group. I also want to start a children's, um, uh, a teenage, a teenage group. So with the larger growing of this, and like I said, it either grows here or it'll grow somewhere else. And with the growth of that, then we will begin to expand. I think our study groups are doing marvelous. What is it up to now? 55, something like that, 60? 60 study groups. Now you gotta realize that's not just the, this is just the one singular person. We're not talking about the people that were in the, within the groups. 
And pretty soon this next year, Francine said we will triple and quadruple that. So it's growing at a very, very rapid pace. Thank God. And people call me, and I, or I call them back, and they say, this woman in Massachusetts, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. She was so out of her mind about it. She said, Sylvia, I'm stuck out here in Massachusetts, if we're not stuck here in Santa, whatever that means. <laughs> She said, it's everything that I ever believed. And I walked around feeling that I was the only one in the whole world that believed this way. And I was afraid to tell anyone for fear they would think I was crazy. So you see, there's a lot of us crazies running around, I told her. But it's a true crazy. If we're crazy, it's the truth. So we're not going to be prejudicial. We can judge action, but not the person. We're not going to be bigoted, and we're going to have this lost art of respect. We're going to start having more respect, and we're going to have discipline. And I don't mean, you know when we think of discipline, line up and shut up, you know. With ourselves. The discipline with ourselves. Body, mind, soul, purity, and clean. And there is such a thing as cleanliness of mind. And that doesn't mean, you know, when I was little and I was going to school and I heard all the nuns and, and even in Episcopalian said, oh, if you have a bad thought, it's the same as a sin. And I used to be so scrupulous as a child that I remember walking by, it must have been about second grade, seeing underpants on a clothesline and thinking, I'm thinking dirty thoughts because of where those pants go on the bottom of a person and now I've committed a sin. That's how insane that was. The only reason we don't want to have impure thoughts is because it's a pain. It's so much nicer to think of good things. Isn't it? It's not because it's a sin. If that's a sin, then we're all damned. We're already damned. We're here. This is it. This is where the hell is. So we're not going to be bigoted. And bigoted and prejudiced are very much the same way. But we're going to have our own opinions. We're going to be formidable in our truth. We're going to stick by our spiritual beliefs because if that happens, all things fall into place. Do rainbows come out and chariots fly up and and money drop from... No. There is a measure of peace that occurs. I know that I'm here. I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm here. And I know I'm going to go home and I'm going to be real smart and not come back again. But I'm going to help as many people along the way seek the truth. So don't keep the truth to yourself. And don't be afraid of scorn. Our Lord was. He came into a culture that scorned him, ripped him, wasn't popular in his day. No. We just, no. Thought the tumor was getting worse. Um, the, the day that he came forward for only three years and said, I come to bring the new law. And the new law is be good, stay away from that dogmatic Pharisee, Sanhedrin group. This had nothing to do with Judaic. It had to do with organization of dogma. And he said, live and do good works. And that's what we're here for. But he did say, come together. He had meetings all the time because there is grace in meetings. And that's why I came. I'm so tough about Sundays. Not because it's a sin, it's only because it's grace giving to all of us to come. If not, then there's no use for it because it's a time of sharing. Today is a special day because we have all this wonderful food that everybody brought. So after today, some of the ministers that pants don't fit real loose won't after today. Making sure I'm back online here. <laughs> okay, it looks like I'm <laughs> functioning here. So, yeah, what's your opinion? What's your belief? And be the best you can.
So Father God created created to uh, you know the most prestigious school for us to experience our unique spark of curiosity for them on the other side to sit and eat popcorn and watch us. <laughs> Um, so the meditation for the winter solstice will be a little later, um, and I'm going to continue with, uh, provided everything's functioning here, it looks like we're doing fine, um, I'm going to continue with the uh, winter solstice. And this is um, the explanation of the colors. This is the time of remembrance. This is the time of quiet and introspection for the year that has passed and the lessons that we've learned. This is the time to bury all of the old pains and guilts and illnesses and fears under a white mantle of snow, which will purify the deeds, purify deeds we have done or deeds done to us. In this way, it is a time of remembrance and a time of forgetting and forgiving. Ask that as we look, look into our emotional and mental well-being, that we ask for guidance to fulfill our chart, keep us on track, and make our lives easier financially, spiritually, with family, friends, socially, and then our option lines become cemented to fulfill our destiny. So yeah, read up on what is your option line. This was the time when the ancient Gnostics renewed their vows and got ready for the oncoming year. So, do we renew our vows today? Yes, so we do <laughs> renew our vows today. So the colors, explanation of the colors are, white is for protection, pure spirit, perception of the highest spiritual attainment, gold, Love of pure knowledge, higher consciousness, religious teachers and philosophers, seekers of all truth. It usually appears as a golden halo. Purple, love of ceremonies. Colored robes were usually worn by the high priest. An observer of truth and sanctity. Blue is tranquility peace and tranquility of spirit, a strong sense of right and wrong, fairness. Green, healing, revitalization, health. Green brings together the blue of peace and the red of activity plus the yellow of intellect. Now for the middle prayer. Dear Asna, as we come up to receive your light, your light, receive our light and your light, we ask that you imbue us with grace, honor, and loyalty. We ask that you are omnipresent in our lives throughout this year and the years to follow. We ask that we, your daughters and sons of this earth, follow in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. And through your light, experience for God. Our Father, keep us protected through the year. Give us the guidance to face all the darkness and adversity that you, Mother Asna, with your golden sword, will protect us from all our enemies. Surround this church and your faithful with your mantle of light. Amen. And now, the communion. So typically, uh, when we are in person, uh, you visualize that you know, two ministers are standing and they hold the communion trays, one with the uh, non-alcoholic uh, beverage, or wine in our case, and uh, a form of small edible that's symbolic for the ceremony. So please join me now uh, in the communion prayer. Dear Father and Mother God, we ask you to witness this communion, which is a symbol of finding our own God-centeredness and Christ-consciousness. In doing this action of taking bread and wine, 
we are impressing on our higher consciousness that we are dedicating our lives to God's will. The symbol of this communion for us through Nova Spiritus means we wish to be born into the new spirit of true spirituality and let go of all the guilt and karma of our past lives and start fresh and new. From this time forward, we will be on track fulfilling our themes and walking with the blessed aura of God's light. We do this as an activation of our will to symbolize to ourselves and the world that we walk in grace and free of all negativity. We ask this in your name. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sidal Sacravillian Ahad. And of course, the translation is, Blessed be this Queen on high that is sacred to all who come to her. And now ushers uh, would normally have you come up and participate uh, in the petitions and communion, and uh, then you'd collect a candle uh, with the color of your choice for this, uh, for this ceremony. And uh, what I'm encouraging you now to uh, grab your uh, communion edible, and uh, we'll participate together in communion. and a favorite beverage. In addition, um, if you've had a chance to uh, select a colored candle to go along with the ceremony, now's that time to light that particular candle. I've got white, but I also want to ask for green and orange for myself as well. Wow, hope you didn't hear that, but the <laughs> it's about 20 mile an hour winds outside right now, so the, the windows are whistling here. Well, there we go. So we light our candles for the color of our aura for this year. Now is the winter solstice meditation. Um, so we do encourage people to sit with their feet flat on the floor uh, and their palms upward in their lap to receive that wonderful healing and grace from uh, Mother and Father God. And when you're ready, you can close your eyes and take a few deep breaths to... Relax the mind and let go of all the stresses and strains of the day or the week or the month and prep your mind for some rejuvenation and a ceremonial meditation. So we like to share that prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening to God. Today we're going to ask God to come and we're going to think of a golden egg and this golden egg is like a sign of reverence. Whatever color you picked, surround the golden egg. The egg has always been the sign of completion, of beginning and end. Inside, feel yourself warm and secure and feel that this egg is very golden and reflective. And when you're ready, you can close your eyes. The golden, the golden reflective is which is protection. Any evil, 
any darkness. Any dark entity that should happen upon us will be reflected back to itself. The light of the Christ consciousness, the rebirth of our Savior coming up, is within our hearts today, and that each golden egg has a golden thread that is threaded together throughout this room. The grace of the Father God shining down on top warms our hearts and makes us realize that all of the old stuff that we've had gone through this year is rinsed away. Feel this egg that is around you. Feel like it is almost pulsating. It will not crack. Nothing can get in that is negative. This is the one place that is this golden egg that you and your God are one. Nothing will ever change that. There will be no aloneness. No loneliness. And all the colors now that you have chosen and everyone else has chosen will swirl around you. The green will swirl and settle in any affected part of your body. The gold will give you higher consciousness. The royal purple, once worn by all the ancient royalty and church dignitary, will rinse through your soul to give you the dignity and the royalty, knowing you are the genetic from God. The blue is to give the tranquility to your soul. The white is for protection. All the colors, like a rainbow circulating around you, with the golden egg pulsating, almost like we could be like pearls of gold around the neck of Mother Asna. In her beautiful mantle, of protection with her arms spread. We are like the necklace she wears close to her heart. So for this year and all the years to come, we dedicate our hearts and our minds, our spirits, and we give thanks. Now, we also ask for our healings for all those we love and thanks for all to the ministers, to the church, to the people around us and the love that we feel for each other and that love, that golden thread of love reaches out through the world from this group. Maybe today on this cold, very cold day that love touches the heart of someone alone in a ditch or a gutter. Some child that is hurt. Someone that is being persecuted. That love will be strong enough to send an arrow of light to all the people. And even if they don't know where it comes from, it doesn't matter. All of a sudden, like magic whiffle dust, this arrow of love and light and warmth gives hope in the darkness for someone out there that is alone and unloved and feeling unwanted. This light gives them care, gives them hope. Someone in a hospital somewhere that feels alone and dying, let us ask right now, that the archetypes come, the spirit guides attend, and they are able to pull that soul through easily. For all the people that are in homes or homeless, people that are persecuted because of their color, we ask today that our group, in the name of the Mother God, Asna, 
is strong enough to send through this cold day love and hope and even salvation. We ask this in the name of the Father, Mother, Holy Spirit, and Christ Consciousness. And that from this day on, you will be renewed. You will feel fresh. You will be fresh. Now, bring yourself up. Bring yourself all the way up to your consciousness on the count of three. One, two, three. Fully and totally awake. That's, <laughs> that's very rejuvenating. Take a moment to bring your, you know, allow your consciousness back in order. Now I will want to share a little bit about collections and announcements. We've reached that portion of our service where we ask for your support. And before submitting your contribution, please take a moment to thank Mother and Father God for the abundance in your life and to request this abundance to and request this abundance continues to come into your life. We ask that you, for your support uh, of this church by your heartfelt donations, giving when you can. May Mother and Father God bless you always. So you can donate directly through the Novus website. Uh, you can also um, start a study group, which you'll be donating that way, but also you know, getting information and sharing with others. Uh, you can buy a book because those proceeds, you can call the office to buy uh, one of the Sylvia's books or a Novus um, uh, Journey of the Soul book because those proceeds go directly to the office. Or you can sign up for Amazon Smile. Um, and that they're going to ask you, what's the nonprofit that you'd like to donate those uh, uh, funds to? Well, tell them Society of Nova Spiritus. Um, some announcements: uh, New Spirit Radio, the trans sessions. These were the trans sessions uh, from you know Sylvia and Francine and and Rahim or. Her, her other spirit guide shared uh, information, and we've done these recordings. Uh, during, let's see, um, one of the fun things is we do have a special prayer ceremony. It's a novena uh, that everybody's welcome to participate in, uh, as well as a prayer by Sylvia. Some of the fun recent things that we've been uh, hearing about, uh, Francine has shared uh, you know, that you'll be treated the way that you treat others. Uh, another fun f uh, fact, they were talking about Fresnel lenses, if you recall, on lighthouses. Um, so there was a description about, um, sorry, let me go back. The, the Fresnel lenses were used on, on pyramids. I think it was, I can't remember if it, if it was Atlantis or the ones in Egypt, but on one of the pyramids, or several of the different pyramids, they would have a Fresnel lens on top. A Fresnel lens. Think of the lens used in what we know of as recent, in our recent history, as the, the big lens used in lighthouses to get that beam out. Um, or maybe you're old enough to remember the funny plastic uh, thing in the back window, the original rear view uh, mirror that before we had cameras, rear view cameras. Uh, there was a plastic piece that went on the back window of your car or van uh, allowed you to see a, a wide view of what's behind your vehicle. Uh, so that's some fun information th about that. And of course, um, there was talk about Atlantis uh, actually resides between uh, Bimini and the Azores. So something fun to catch up on. Or, you know, maybe we're going to be live here uh, uh, this week. We should be live here this week as well. Uh, I do encourage you to uh, check out Chris Dufresne. He's been doing a lot of questions and answers. Um, so watch and join there. Uh, he's on YouTube Live and some really fun posts on Instagram as well. Um, his website is chrisrightnow.com. Uh, of course, 
with Society, Society of Nova Spiritus. You can find us on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can watch the past Sunday service videos. And we do encourage you to share, like, subscribe, because uh, that way you'll get notices when these are posted. Uh, there is a special Zoom service uh, hosted by Reverend Ellen Schloss. Uh, and you can uh, to participate in that, uh, you know, get an invitation to that. Put your email in on the website, and you will get uh, a notice when that's uh, and an, you know a notice of invitation for that. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, yes. So the next Sunday service for Facebook and YouTube should be uh, on the next first Sunday of the month. Uh, now's the time for petitions and testimonials. And, of course, you can place concerns on the website uh, in the prayer chain or share them in the comments. And, of course, we're going to put that energy out together here uh, in, a, in a moment for, in a moment of silence that we're going to all uh, ask for uh, those, those healings and answers to those prayers. Uh, let's see. So now... Let's take a moment of silence, and we're going to ask a Mother and Father God and the archetypes and archangels, even the spirit guides, to get involved. But let's get that energy out like we did with the um, meditation. Uh, we're going to ask for healing prayers to go out and help those that have uh, special prayers or special needs. So let's take a moment, moment of silence. Amen. And of course, you know, if you're putting in petitions or you've got, uh, I talked about the prayer chain as well. So now's the time for the benediction. Uh, this is the truest form of sacrament or sacred oath used by the Gnostics at Quamran centuries ago. Um, it's led by a minister and uh, it's not written down anywhere. Uh, but you're going to repeat after me. So I will say a phrase and you'll repeat it after me. Here's the benediction. Blessed be God the Father. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of Asna. Blessed be her holy name. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of our founder, Sylvia Brown. Blessed be her holy name. Blessed be the archetypes that protect us. Blessed be their holy names. Blessed be our spirit guides. Blessed be all their holy names. Blessed be everyone here today. Blessed be all our names. Blessed be our loved ones not present. Blessed be all their names. Amen. Arim, Shem, Beth, Zedal, Sacrevillian, Ahad. And the translation is, Blessed be this queen on high who is sacred to all who come to her. And now, for the closing prayer. Again, you're welcome to read along with me or listen. Dear Mother Asna, please know us by name. Know our faces. Know our hearts. Please see that we 
are all gathered here to honor you in your name. Notice and see the emulation and the imitation of us coming up to light these candles in symbol of the aura we want to surround us. Make us strong throughout this year that no matter what adversity comes, we are able to handle it. Knowing that this life is only transitory, knowing that it is a passing star in a dark night. We also ask, as we pass through this dark night of life, that we are like a streaking comet, that we give off brilliance so that everyone that follows, follows after, will be able to know and that the name of Gnosticism will be on the, everyone's lips. And your name, dearest mother, will be heralded throughout the world. Again, we ask this in our Lord Jesus' name, Father God, the Christ Consciousness, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Have a great month. And of course, oh, and we want to extinguish our aura candle as well at, at this time, if you'd like. I encourage you to stay safe, wash your hands, and read Sylvia's comment on washing hands in both of the books where she talked about this pandemic. Wear a mask when it can help you or people around you. Uh, of course, keep your six feet of distance uh, when it's helpful for others or yourself, and when you can, get vaccinated and boosted. And I look forward to sharing again next month, and we'll talk to you then.